the only one on. Hello. Hey. Hi, Mama. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. All right. Yeah. You know, Larry just got on the road, so I guess he'll be um he'll be signing in shortly. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. He had, he had signed in and then he signed off. Oh, he did? Yeah, he must have just trying to sign in while he was uh on his way home. <laughs> I no, they just left. Oh, okay. so he's going to be calling in from his uh, car. Oh, um, okay. Car, yeah. Is it his turn today? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. So he, he's all ready. Oh, okay. Perfect. <laughs> Here comes Mort and Toti. Okay. Mm. I have uh, two more questions to answer. So I'm not gonna... Okay. All right. And Joyce Danelli just sent a message. Her mm -hmm. husband has been at uh, urgent care all day today. Yeah, yeah I saw, we that. saw that. Wow. <laughs> just praying yes, for I, Brother I, Cleve. Hey, Uncle Mark. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? All right. All right. Hi, how are you Larry. doing? Hey, oh, Mark. pretty good. Hi, Larry. Yo, Joyce, how are you doing? Good. <clears throat> Doing okay, Tommy? Yeah, hold yeah. on. Tina got it all mute. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, no. it's not on mute. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah so She's trying to give me instructions and you guys are talking. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> Larry, I think he's trying to get himself set up more. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you, I can hear you now. Can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 Oh my gosh. This phone is giving me fits. Oh wow. My the face the face of my phone has cracked the, the glass. Mm -hmm. So getting on was I I it, it, I don't know how it worked. It just <laughs> I was yeah. messing around in the work. Then right. to try to get the volume on. <sighs> but it worked up a split now. You sound clear. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Good. It's tough when a plan doesn't come together. It'll be a, just maybe a minute or so. Okay. I see 60. Aunt Marva, Uncle Mort, Mama Jordan, Brother Tommy. And Joel okay, is on right. too. Sister Jill, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, good. So I guess um, we'll wait a minute or so more because okay. what I'm going to be doing is getting in the car with Narisa, mm -hmm. and um, I'm gonna. Uh, I don't want to start get started and then have to stop and start again you know so um mm -hmm. if you guys are just bear with me for a couple minutes she should be here any minute now no problem all right all right so what's up up? hey hey preacher how's it going what's good, what it's good. Right, hey. just uh yeah i'm doing all right what's up what's up mark i'm pretty good how are you doing all right. All right. Uh, Jew, Marvel, Joyce. Hi. Yeah. How uh, you doing? Hi. I'm doing all right. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. You know what I'm saying? How are you, Elton? I'm good. I'm good. Hi, Joel. Hi, 
how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks for Hi, Dylan and Dalton also. Hey, Marva. Hey, Tommy. Hey, hey. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Marva. Hello, dear. So let me give you a let me give you a, a good praise report. Okay. Uh -huh. Yesterday, my daughter she called and uh, she said I have to go pick the kids up uh, from school. Uh, 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 Jackson, our grandson, tests positive. Ah. Mm. Oh, man, so Tina and I we're praying and we're praying and everything. She called me this morning. She said, it was a false test. False Amen. Test. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, good. So, oh, God is good. Yes. How yes, old is Jackson? Man. Hmm? How old is Jackson? Seven. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, when he, she had to pick him up and the other three or four kids that he played with, their parents had to pick them up. Yes. Right. Yes. Everybody Man. had to leave. Now, she has to send all the information from her doctor to the school's email so they can send to the other parents so those kids don't have to be tested. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh. And, and, they and can then tomorrow he can go, go back, back to, to school. school. Mm -hmm. Oh, you talk about your priorities change? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. No, yeah. yeah. I know. I yeah. know exactly what you're talking about, Tommy. Yeah. We got you know, I, I was worried. I was worried about washing the car or not washing the car. That didn't matter no more. <laughs> that is minor. Yeah, yes. that was minor. Uh huh. That's right. Yeah. That is so minor. God is so good. Yes. Well, my grandson told me yesterday. I said, "How are you feeling?" He says, "Normal." No. <laughs> And um, he got his taste and his, his taste back a few okay. days, about maybe three days ago. And I heard him telling his mother, I knew I had it back because I could smell my soap. <laughs> wow. I had to take a shower. And it reminded me of a few years ago, I was in Hawaii with Marva and Ron, and I came down with the flu. Right. And I was sick that entire week. The morning that we were getting ready to leave, we were going to breakfast. That was the first time I realized how good the soap in my bathroom smelled. Because <laughs> I was feeling good that day, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I know what he's what he went through. Wow. I can imagine. But... Man. Oh. So he just had a he just had a, a flu? No, no, he was he tested positive. Oh my you know, word. He plays um he's on um Skyline's uh, football team. Mm -hmm. uh, almost every week, some kid gets uh, test, you know, test positive. They had to cancel mm. the uh, homecoming game. Right. But they, and they test them twice a week, I believe it is. But we were not, you know, we knew. Well, he's he's been fully vaccinated. Right. So we felt comfortable about that. But right, they cancel homecoming. There was four, I think four players and one of the coaches that tested positive and they were not vaccinated. Oh, wow. Wow. So yeah. When he called his mother with that news, I was like in shock. Oh, yes. I understand. I totally. But, you yeah. know, thank God he was vaccinated because his symptoms were mild. Yes. Yeah. But he still had to do the quarantining and everything. It's so funny every time Larissa takes his meal to the door she, there's a table outside for them to put his meal and she hollers room service oh yeah these two spirits. yeah these they, it's two boys in the same family right mm -hmm. and his older brother he said, no, you sleep in, they sleep in the same bedroom. Turn. He told his little brother, he said, you sleeping in the den. <laughs> <laughs> this is something else. Oh, my word. And, and the world is acting like this thing is over. It's not over at all. No, we it's all not. Have to get tested twice. <clears throat> wow. Hmm. Yes. Absolutely. It's still very scary. Yeah. yeah, even if you're vaccinated, 
you still have to be careful. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Common sense would tell you, but people, man, I mean, they are so arrogant about it. Yeah. And, and, and until it happens in, in, in their family, then everything changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys for being patient. I'm now in the car and um, <laughs> we can. You're the passenger now, huh? No, I'm the passenger. <laughs> I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm good to go. Oh, um, Narisa, you room service and a driver? And <laughs> <laughs> a driver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so thank you guys for being patient again. Um, I'm leading today and we're doing uh, day 20, day 21 of um, our study about taming our tongue. We're covering the self-absorbed tongue today, mm -hmm. the self-absorbed tongue. And um, this will be interesting. <laughs> again, it should be interesting. Um, we probably know a few people who are self-absorbed and um, the discussion should be lively. With that being said, I'm gonna um, ask that uh, Sister Tina open this up with prayer and then uh, we'll go into the lesson. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you lift up Joyce, Joyce's husband. Yes. Okay. Oh, we're on the same page, Mama Jory, and I was gonna put his name first. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you again for bringing us together. Please put your healing hands and hear our prayers on Brother Cleveland. We've all had pain and aches, and you will have them as we get older. Yes. But please watch over him. We are constantly praying for him. And yeah. over us, please. a lot of us are on medication, and mm -hmm. us have to take main pain medication. We know that you are the healing one. We know that you are the one that can ease our pain and our, right, right. And our suffering. Yes. We look to you, God, for our guidance. We look to you, God, for our help. God, please, over each and every one of us, as we listen to the messenger, and please, God, watch over the messenger while he's giving this lesson today. And on the road. Yes, Lord. Because while Tommy and I was driving today, Lord, we saw someone doing a donut in the street. So, Lord, please watch over Narissa and Larry. Please, Lord. Yes. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that traveling, for the traveling grace. Um, can you guys still hear me clearly? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So today we're talking about the self-absorbed tongue. And mm. before I get started in the message, uh, or the summary rather, you know who the most self-absorbed person is of our lifetime? Anybody want to guess? <laughs> Trump. Huh? What did you say? <laughs> Your Trump. president. Well, your president. I think somebody said it. Yeah, Trump. Trump. Yeah. Well, I'm Trump. Uh, yeah. Trump. Trump. That's right. He is the most self-absorbed person of this That's time. Just like we talked about Ali being the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. This dude is the most self-absorbed of all time. <laughs> and uh, he is um, not by himself. He mm -hmm. has plenty of people who follow him and plenty of people who believe in him. That's why he's able to continue on being self-absorbed. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next few minutes as we do the summary that somebody should have been able to tell him at some point, you're not right. You need to change it up. But nobody did that. So when you don't uh, stop it or do you don't do anything to defend against it, then you become a part of the problem. You become a part of it. You perpetuate it. So um, all of his followers, the retrumplicants that follow him, 
they are self-perpetuating or they're perpetuating the situation, right? So I just wanted to put that out there because uh, we have a great example of someone who is the ultimate self-absorbent individual. Mm -hmm. So the opposite of being self-absorbed is having humility. God sent the ultimate example of humility in Jesus. Jesus was accused of, of being blasphemous by the Pharisees when he told us in uh, John 10 and 30 that I and the Father are one. The Pharisees said that's blasphemous, and they thought that Jesus was being self-absorbed when actually he was doing the opposite. He was being humble, and he was really informing us that we and the Father are one as well. And the Pharisees and those who were his critics didn't understand that because they thought that they were the ones who were the messiahs. They were the messengers. But Jesus was the one who came to tell us that I and the Father are one. And just as he, Jesus said, I and the Father are one, we and the Father are one. So he didn't say those words to bring attention to himself as much as it was to help us, to help others. And he wanted us to understand that we have God living within us and that we are the temple of the Lord and he dwells there within. He knew it for himself. So he didn't have to remind himself. He was doing it so that others would know about God being in, in dwelling in them. And that's what God, that's the reason why God, God sent Jesus for us. He sent Jesus so that we would know that there's an unbreakable bond within us with the Father. God placed genuine interest in Jesus's heart to save us, to be our savior, to give us salvation. And he also sent him to be the example so that we also will believe. Jesus didn't do his work for his own sake, but for the sake of the one who sent him. Now let's look at Satan. He was thrown out of heaven because he wanted everything to be about him. He didn't recognize the God within. Instead, he wanted to be God. If Jesus is the greatest example of humility, Satan is a great example of being self-absorbing, self-absorbed. Not only does Satan want to take the attention away from God, he wants us to ignore our connection to the Father. He wants us to think that we can do whatever we want on our own. He, he wants us to believe that we can achieve success and have the victory on our own. But as conscientious Christians, we know that all of our blessings come from above. So we're either acknowledging the power of God within us or we're pretending that we're in our life or we're being pretenders in our lives. And this is a mistake that we should acknowledge if it's happening or if we see it happening with our fellow man. Another thing that God wants us to acknowledge, it comes from Philippians two and four, where Paul tells us each of us should not only look out for our own interests, but also to the interests of others. Verse five goes on to say, but we also should have that mind of Christ within us. So again, mm -hmm. Christ was sent as the example for us to be humble and to have an understanding that we have a personal, intimate relationship with God. We can have a personal and intimate relationship with God. So what a friend we have in Jesus. And there's uh, verse 15, uh, chapter 15 of John, verse 13, that tells us greater love has no one than this to, to lay his down, lay down his life for a friend. And Jesus did exactly that for us. He laid his life down for us. So again, he's going back to not being self-absorbed, but doing something for the sake of others. So that's what the opposite of being self-absorbed is. Not being self-centered, but being others-centered. Dr. Pagas used Haman as another example from the Bible. And... Haman in the book of Esther was self-absorbed, personified, says uh, Dr. Pagas. 
throughout the entire account of his life, we never see him express interest in anyone other than himself. himself. None of his friends had enough courage to discourage him and from being self-absorbent. Going back to what I was talking about Trump, all the Retrumplicans, somebody should have sense enough to tell him that he's wrong. But instead what they're doing is they're adding fuel to the fire, making him think that he's right and making his uh, self-absorbent attitude deeper rooted. So if we have friends who are self-absorbing, we should do our friend a favor and address it. The self-absorbing type demonstrates the desire for attention, for ego boosting, and for other selfish needs. That's their de ultimate desire. But like our Lord Jesus, we should try to demonstrate the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is the opposite of being self-absorbed. It is being others absorbed. Another absorbed person, uh, a, a, an, a, a, an absorbed person focuses um, on themselves and the opposite of an absorbed person focuses on the person that is at hand or the opposite, the person who is receiving the information. People love being in the presence of someone who's not self-absorbing. Why? Because they acknowledge the concerns of others and they acknowledge what's going on around them. And it's not just about themselves. The self-absorbed personality dies hard. It can't resist the desire to make its own issues the focus of attention. So it's hard to get the opportunity to share our own interests when we're dealing with somebody who is self-absorbed. So it's hard to have a, a dialogue or a conversation, a two-way conversation with somebody who's self-absorbed. And there's nothing mutual about having a, an exchange with a self-absorbed person. We may be having an open discussion and all of a sudden, the focus of the discussion turns about what they do. Now I'm gonna raise my hand right here because I find myself that's something that's something that I do. We may be having a conversation and somebody says that they oh they went to a football game. And I find myself saying, you know what? I also went to a football game the other day. And I, it's kind of like I'm turning the conversation into it being about me. So as I read through this uh this day, I had to get myself in check. I had to do some self-examination because that's not right. And I know other people who are like that. And when I hear other people do it, I don't like it either. So I definitely need to start watching it myself. If someone is self-absorbed, they should start trying to use active listening. And active listening happens when you Listen not only with your ears, but also with your heart and your mind. Active listening includes demonstrating empathy and compassion. Active listening includes showing genuine interest in what the other person is talking about. I think I gave you guys this example before when I used to call kids into the supervisor's office when they would want to talk to me. And I would have them sit down next to me and turn and start looking at my emails or something like that that was the wrong thing to do. I wasn't showing any empathy, any compassion, any interest in what they had to say. I was just focused on what I was trying to do. Today's affirmation tells us, I look not only to my own interests, but to the interests of others. Therefore, my issues are not the primary topic of my conversations. See, God wants us to share our lives with one another. He expects us to live in a community. We're told in 1 Corinthians 12 and 12, the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And though, it is, though, though all its parts are many, they form one body. And so it is with Christ. So we are the body of Christ. One body made up of many parts. Not a body made up of one part, but made up of many parts. So everyone needs to know he or she matters and everybody also needs to have the opportunity to express themselves, express their concerns, their challenges, their desires, their hopes. And um, 
they they should do that with someone who cares about what they're saying. So why not let that be us? Why not be a care, caring, listening ear? Who knows? One day we might need somebody to do that for us. We may need someone to be a caring, listening ear for us. And it goes back to the golden rule once again. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This world will be a better place to live if we learn to be selfless rather than selfish. Mm -hmm. So what does a profit a man to gain the whole world mm -hmm. if he doesn't have anyone to share it with? <laughs> because that's what will end up happening to somebody who's self-absorbed. Nobody will want to be around you. Nobody will want to talk to you and nobody will want to um, uh, be in your presence because it always is about you. So self-absorbent person and I, I heard this from um, listening to Dr. Love Love. She said the self-absorbent person always want the movie to be, it, they, they always want their movie to be showing on the screen <laughs> and they always want their movie to be the one that everybody gives two thumbs up. Well, a narcissist is another self-absorbing behavior. Yes. A narcissist only cares about themselves. Mm -hmm. They manipulate to get their way. They lie about things to make themselves look good. They blame others for negative behavior. They'll punish others for making them punish them. Mm -hmm. They're totally self-absorbed. So narcissism is a form of self being self-absorbed. So we are to recognize that God is the center of our life and God is the center of all life not one individual, but God is the center of life. Ooh, got dark. <laughs> so we are to think about others. We are to care about others. We are to love others and we are to listen to others. And the greatest modern example of, I mean, greatest example of um, loving for others, it comes from God when it was written in John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that's the ultimate example of giving of giving of yourself or giving something from yourself to someone else. God gave us his only begotten son. So these are good examples of self-absorbent behavior and also good examples of people who will demonstrate humility. So we should try to strive to be humble in all that we do and in all that we do, try to avoid being self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. So at this time, I'm gonna open up the floor to the discussion. Thank you guys for being patient with me. I was trying to read in the dark a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we got through that. Um, all right. so, well, yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. So let's uh, go on ahead and open up the, the floor for discussion. Um, I know that somebody knows someone that is self-absorbed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and if you say you don't, then guess what? You're probably the one that's self-absorbed. So. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys for your listening. Yeah. And uh, let's, let's open up the discussion. Mm-hmm. Nearly. I started it off. Um, please, first of all, you know, uh, Trump, let's talk about that, but his father was just as worse than he was. He just didn't have a platform that Trump had. And, you know, they, had, they say the apple don't fall too far from the tree. So, yep. You know, yeah, self-preserved person, I, you know, it's just, especially I was thinking about when uh, Satan was tempting Jesus. He said, you know, I, I give you all these splendors. And, uh, and Jesus, you know, he didn't respond to, you know, he didn't respond to him, but what all he had. Who's this? Feedback. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me let me let me something too close. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. yes. Got a mute. Okay. There we go. Yeah. You shut down. You can put it back. Okay. On. Sorry, I had to shut down the computer. Just mute. 
I had to shut down the computer. Go ahead, you would. No, okay, I was just saying, you know, when, when Jesus was being tempted, and in that tempted him with, with all, he can have all the splendor and stuff, and Jesus didn't, you know, he could have came back and told him about it, for all he already had. But, you know, he just, you know, spoke the word with the, with the, spoke, you know, Father Satan with the word of God, and, and you know, sometimes we just, you know, we hear service door, people brag about what all they have, and, you know, it's, it's, how, it's how we respond as well you know is that they you know because if you if you have it you know you you, don't, you usually don't have to brag about it but you know this person just wanted the tension like you said the tension and and uh just want to be noticed Can you guys hear me? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, I can see my phone. I put it on mute, can't get it off. But you're <laughs> absolutely right. And, and that's one thing that we could always do. It's just a good example um, to Jesus. You know, Jesus says that the ultimate example of, um, you know, being humble and using the word of God makes people defenseless and um, I have to say because Word of God is true, and it's uh, uh, don't let nothing take his power. <laughs> so yeah. not even safe when he was trying to tempt. You can't, you can't. <laughs> that nothing can take the power of the Word of God. You know, it's back. No. Yeah. Anybody else has anything to say about the self time? I I have a comment. Um, I'm laughing because I was supposed to be completely quiet tonight. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not feeling that well, but first of all, my comment is going to piggyback on um, on what Elton said about Donald Trump, and that wasn't my initial comment. My initial comment was going to be the confession that I'm a borderline self-absorbed person, <laughs> Larry, so you're not alone. <laughs> but anyway, I, I've re in reading this, I said, girl, you're a borderline. You need to check yourself. But anyway... Um, I thought I had seen everything with, with Trump's self-absorbed behavior until today when I s saw on the news just before coming in that um, I don't know if it's springboarded from him or from his people, but that Kennedy's son, you probably heard some of you probably yes, heard it. You heard it too? Yeah. yeah that yeah. Kennedy's son's death was a fake death because mm. it was intention to come back and run with Trump as Trump's vice president. <laughs> and the, street, the streets were lined with people waiting as if they were waiting for the Thanksgiving Day parade. Yeah. Waiting yeah. to see, waiting to receive this man back from the dead. Mm. I looked at that and I thought, my goodness, I never thought it would get that far. But that's, that's, that, I want, just wanted to share that. Mm, yeah. The second thing is that a few nights ago, I was talking to my little grandson and his parents who were all on FaceTime. And he had a new haircut. Well, he had, he has worn it before, a Mohawk haircut. And I said, oh, Max, I really like your, your haircut. It looks really nice. I had missed that. And he said, yes, grandma, you know, I'm growing it longer now because I'm going to be using the sponge to curl it. <laughs> and I said, that's nice, Max. I said, grandma uses one too. And Max left the room. <laughs> <laughs> so his mother said, his mother said, mama, I've got to let you know that it's not cool for a seven-year-old to hear that his grandmother uses <laughs> His grandmother uses a sponge to curl her hair, and he's going to be using it. <laughs> so I thought, you know what? As quite as as simple as that looks, that's a self-absorbed behavior. I should let this child just go on and finish telling me all about his new hairstyle and how excited he is. <laughs> Max left the room. <laughs> so. 
we can do things without even realizing it. And that was a good thing for me because it will cause me to watch that more and to listen more carefully when someone else is speaking to me. Yeah. The, from, the, from the mouth of a babe. <laughs> a child's behavior can, can turn you around every time, but it yeah, caused amen. me to really stop and listen more. And I thought I was being compassionate when I talked to people and so on, but that was a good example for me. So, just wanted to share that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was a, I was gonna, uh, I was gonna tell you if you see, if you meet a self-absorbed person, you just want to take off and run. <laughs> uh, because they, uh, they have no regards for anyone. So. You can't even remind them that the world does not revolve around them. Self-absorbing people will drain you. Ooh. And you cannot let someone get comfortable disrespecting you. Even if you give a self-absorbing person everything they ask for, it's never enough. Mm. Then when they create their own storm in their life, they get mad when it rains. <laughs> so I worked for a self-absorbing person. Uh, he was my boss for 25 years. Mm. And it was, it was just despicable. <clears throat> but the opposite of a self-absorbed person is my wife, Tina. Mm. <laughs> You can, <laughs> I see people talking to her and she act like she hanging on every word they say. Yeah. And I'd be like, you know, I can't do it. <laughs> I gotta tell them the truth. <laughs> but when my wife talks to anyone, whether it be a coworker or a friend, a salesperson, she gives them her undivided attention. Sometimes I think she's talking to one of our children on the phone. It'd be a salesperson. I mean, <laughs> hang the phone up. <laughs> you know, I mean, it really, it's an art. It's a gift that she has uh, to, to listen to you and be compassionate to what you're saying. You know, and I just tell you, you know what? The warrior's are about to come on. You got to fix that problem yourself. I'll see you later. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's all I have. Yeah, I love what you said about that. Um, it's, it's, it's punishing to be around a self sort of person. And one of the things that Dr. Gav said is like uh, hugging a porcupine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That was easy. <laughs> and then the other thing uh, that we were saying that is, is, that is active listening. That's what I was trying to describe. She's a good active listener. Yeah. And, um, that can take you a long way, um, you know, demonstrating that that, that that active listening, that genuine interest in someone else. So, Sister Tana, we're going we to learn from you. <laughs> hey, hey, Larry, when, yeah. when, I, when I was young, you know what I, I heard a buddy tell a beautiful woman? Mm. And she was self-absorbed. Yeah. We were in the club, and he said, uh, hey, so you have any makeup in that purse? She said, yeah. He said, why don't you eat some so you can be beautiful on the inside? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Got her. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. No, I, uh, um, I wanted to share, but it's I think. Teresa takes questions here. I couldn't help but over here. Um, <laughs> How's everybody doing? You know, um, when you were talking about Donald Trump, it reminded me, my book club read his niece's book last year. And um, his niece, Mary Trump, uh, wrote a book about the Trump family, but it was a lot about him. And um, she's not a fan. And one of the things that stuck out to me, and which I think is a trait that's very common in self-absorbed and narcissistic people, is that he is actually incredibly insecure and a lot of the root of that insecurity and his niece by the way is a phd clinical psychologist so she's 
uh, starts the book off by saying, you know, she's, she's not her patient, but she's very qualified to, um, you know, assess and kind of diagnose what his issues are. And she actually calls him um, one of the worst cases of narcissism that she's ever seen in her professional career. And she um, describes his childhood as lacking a lot of love. His mother was very mm-hmm. sick. She was, his mother was very self-absorbed with a lot of illnesses that seemed like maybe they were imagined. So she spent a lot of time in the hospital and, you know, back, back and forth to the doctors. Um, there was not, there was a lot of wealth in his life and a lot of uh, privilege, but not a lot of love. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think one of the hardest things to do is to love someone like who ends up like him. But one of the best things we can try to do with people who are self-absorbed and narcissistic is try to look at what it is that's driving them to be that way and correct them in a loving way. Um, and that was something I thought of when you, when you shared that about Donald Trump. I mean, mm-hmm. and he's, you know, I, I don't know if he's a lost cause at this point, but um, I would you know, suspect that a lot of the root of his behaviors and people like him is a lot of insecurity. And I think most of us who grew up in loving homes and with, you know, being surrounded with that security of love, um, we, we aren't self-absorbed because we didn't have to be. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, Nerissa, um, I, I was uh, just about to, um, to say something along that track, track with uh, all due respect to number 44. <laughs> Because he was a leader with all the respect to leadership. Um, he goes beyond self-absorption, though. Um, he is altogether the epitome of the narcissistic personality disorder, which self-absorption is one of their characteristics. Um, and, uh, of course, it should have been called, instead of narcissistic personality, it should be called satanic personality uh-huh. yeah. disorder because the epitome of self-absorption, the epitome of narcissism and the epitome of all things evil, of course, is the created being called Satan who took it upon himself to try to snatch the very heaven from under the throne of God. But the As you've said, and others have said tonight, the opposite of that would be the humility and the unself-absorption of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was so so attentive to the needs of us as sinners that he took on our sins upon the cross and died for us, that we might be forgiven. And he is the epitome of humility, the epitome of goodness, the epitome of kindness, the epitome of everything that we should want to be. But I find the self-absorbed person is that person that calls you on the telephone after they call several more people that day. And they say, you say, hello, how, how are you? And that's the last word you get in. Because from their own, it's their show. It's all about them. Because the moment you say, how are you? They start off on a whole track all about themselves. And when you try to squeeze a word in, they just turn that whole thing around and talk <laughs> about themselves some more. They, in fact, flip the script on you. And, um, but I've also known people like Tina and people like all of you on here uh, and people like, uh, uh, like Mother George, uh, people like uh, Dr. McKnight who can sit and listen to you all the day long and the bright smile that they shine upon you gives you so much attention and makes you feel so good until it can go along for days encouraging you just from that one contact with them. 
But uh, that's all I want to say. This is actually, well, all the lessons in this book, every time in this book uh, has made a major impact on me. All the lessons have had an impact. And uh, so th this is just one of them. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you were saying that, it made me, re uh, it reminded me um, of, uh, like, I, 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 I please, I don't mean this to be offensive, like, and I hope I'm not cursing, you know, using cuss words, but I, what one thing that the kids call each other sometimes is, like, you're a attention whore. <laughs> And I don't, you know, and, and that's literally means that like you sell your soul to get some attention, you know. And um, some people really will just like they'll do anything to get attention, even if it's negative attention. Mm -hmm. So yes. some kids will um, act out um, in class if they're not a good reader. They'll do something to get kicked out of class because mm -hmm. they're not a good reader, you know, and. Um, it's, but, but it ultimately boils down to them thinking about themselves, you know, <laughs> and mm -hmm. they'll do anything to get, even if it's negative, you know, so, um, that's what I thought about when you were describing that, you know, that, uh, this, the, the attention board out there. Just, yes. They, they exist. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I could. Oh, oh, go ahead, Tina. Oh, okay. Um, I, I have been um, like you, Larry. I, I can say that I have done that when someone says, you know, I, for example, I, I saw this movie and I say, oh yeah. And, and I saw this one. And, but normally when I do that, it was, it's mainly for me to get into the conversation. <laughs> I have nothing else to talk about. So if they say, oh, yeah, I went to this store. Oh, yeah, I went to that store, too. And then I wouldn't say anything. But now that I have read this, I'm like, wow, I'm bringing myself into it. Not realizing, I just want to be part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I am guilty of that. But um, as far as when someone else talks, um, I, I think that was a habit I had because I was the oldest also. And I would focus on what my brothers was doing and what my mom was doing. And, um, and I just took that to my adulthood. So when people do talk, I, I really pay attention because I'm interested in what they have to say because I'm interested in people. Um, but I have, I have had family members that as soon as you would say, oh, my leg hurt. Oh, oh, yeah, my leg hurt so much, too. I want to go to the hospital. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I was calling a doctor. You no, know, and that's every single yeah, go to Yeah, but uh, um, I kind of bring it on myself, too. For, for people that, that are self-absorbed. Because when I ask, how was your day? That's you like open it up. Yes. a piece for me. I really want to know how was your day. You know, and when you come home and from, but this is for anybody. When you come home from work and they say, how was work? Oh, it was fine. No, I really want to know how was work. And you know, I've been told by my husband and my son, I really don't want to talk about my job. <laughs> I was really, you know, so, but um, what I like about this one guy, his name was Frank Wilson, that's in the book. And he was a, a producer from Motown. And he had a lot of gold, um, gold records. But when he talked to people, he never mentioned that. You know, he was just a listener. And, and that's, that's a person for sure that's not self-absorbed because he could have went on and on and on about his accomplishment, but all he wanted to do was to hear what somebody else was saying. Mm. <laughs> and um, what I... 
what I really like on page 91 where it says, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Challenge yourself to go a whole day without making any of the issues about you. You know, when they talk, don't say, uh, yeah, me too, or nothing. Just make it that whole day, make it about whoever you're around, make it about them. Want to sign your name on that? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's a self-observed person can really take up your whole day. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, this book right here, it really helps you looking in the mirror. It really does. Points out the things that we didn't think we were doing, but I guess we are. Mm-hmm. You again, Larry. Self-examination is really important. Um, it's uh, probably the best corrective action that is the best way to take make corrections is to make self-correction. Um, it's okay to get constructive criticism from someone else, but it's best when you can self-correct. And then it is, it's more lasting then when you can self-correct. So this book has been uh, full of things that have taught me that I have to correct for myself. And um, yeah, yeah, that's, and, and this is one one of the self-absorbing stuff, you know, this, this is one of the ones that I have to take a look in the mirror, the man in the mirror, and um, you know, make sure that I'm not carrying on with the, being self-absorbing. Yes. Okay, give me the pen, I'll sign. <laughs> I'll let you guys know next week how this turned out. <laughs> One of the things that I um, did when after I read this one, for some reason, this particular tongue um, really had me thinking a lot about I don't want to ever feel that I am wearing the shoe of a self-absorbed person. And I know that I have, at some point in time, I have done that. Sometimes even when we talk about someone calling you on the phone and they ask you, um, they start to talk and you may not necessarily, I may not necessarily feel like talking. So instead I start talking about all the things that I have to do. That is a a form of self-absorption. And um, so I wrote on this thing, I said here that I, another thing is trying to be a good listener. Like, mm-hmm. talk, like Tina said, you if you are listening to somebody, but you are looking away at, in another distance like we talked about last week with the judgmental tongue, you know, you're looking off into something else. You're not even hearing what they're saying or or you or a person is talking and you can't you just can't wait for them to stop so that you can say what you have to say and so you're not even you're not even observing what that person is saying and so i said that um i would i will make it a point to pay attention to what others are saying and practice listening so i have i never appear to be um, exhibiting this kind of behavior because it uh, described a self-absorbed person as being uh, self, uh, let me see, self preoccupied, self-centered, self self-obsessive, egotistical, self mm. preoccupied with oneself or one's own affairs, often to the exclusion of others or the outside world. And you know, some a lot of times we observe those behaviors in people. Someone may get up there to speak and, and it's all about them. Like the platform is them and they are not even concerned about anybody else that is around them. And, um, and a lot of times we as observers may sit and dislike this behavior, but no one says anything 
to that person and that person continues to, to behave like that and, um, and they're, they're alienating themselves more and more from people because of that platform that they put themselves on. Right. I had two, two um, reports or, or stories that I heard this week. One of them was just today. But earlier this week, I saw a CNN interview, um, a lady being interviewed on CNN, and I clicked on it. And she was talking about the problems that she's having with her husband because of the vaccination. And she said that uh, she is a cancer survivor, breast cancer survivor. And so before the vaccine came out, excuse me, before the vaccine came out, her husband was one of these people that was following all the guidelines, you know, the washing of the hands, the sanitizers, the Mass, he was following all the guidelines. He was very strict about it. And then the vaccine came out and somehow he started reading stuff on social media and other places. And he started filling his head up with all of these um, ideas that the vaccine is not good for, for us. She told him that she because she has on you, she's for the vaccine, and also because she has underlying issues, she is going to take the vax, get the vaccine. He told her if she got the vaccine, he's going to divorce her because okay. he feels that okay. if she gets the vaccine, then she could pass on something into his body. <laughs> you know, cause him to, anyway. you know, to to behave out of the ordinary mm -hmm. so instead she turned around and filed for divorce <laughs> but well. she says she says this is a person that she doesn't know anymore because he has all these crazy notions and all these things that he's coming up with but he's getting them all from social media mm -hmm. and he lives on that stuff and he's it's just eating him up so wow. she's right now going through a divorce and she says, mm. like she said, I no longer know this man that I thought I knew all these years. Wow. And then today, as I was going to listen to um, to Reginald, Dr. Reginald Sharp, I saw um, an article uh, on YouTube. It says, husband of, of after 18 years that her husband left her and left a, a, a wipe, took everything from the apartment. So I clicked on it and it was a woman that was on Tam uh, Tamron Hall's show recently. And they invited her to the show because whatever she posted on Instagram or wherever she posted it, it went viral and with you know millions of viewers watching this thing. But this lady went to a convention in Las Vegas, a business convention. She has like three businesses of her own that she's running. And, and working full time. She had told her husband a few months ago that she, um, well, they've been together for 18 years, but they've been married five years. They've known each other since school, high school. Um, she told her husband that she wanted to um, work for herself, you know, step down from corporate America and work for herself. She has a jewelry business and a couple of others, but she wants to be an entrepreneur. And he told her that, um, you know, it, if she did that, they'll have to get a divorce because he felt like she could not support her end of the, the expenses by having her own business, even though her business is so far has been successful along with her full-time job. So they've had to have go to counseling and they've been to counseling and everything was working fine, she thought. And she left for this convention with her sister-in-law, his brother's wife. And uh, they were in Vegas. She said they talked up to two days before, um, after she got there. They talked all the time. And then she didn't hear from him the next day. And she texted him, no response. 
And she kept saying, what's going on? That's not like him. And anyway, she didn't hear any more from him. When she got back home, Even her apartment was cleaned <laughs> out. Mm. The only thing left there was her clothing. Even took the washer and the dryer. He disconnected the internet. He did everything and just left her in a completely bare apartment. So they showed you her. she's on Instagram walking through all the rooms and showing what, you know, and oh, he left her wedding dress. He did leave her wedding dress. Wow. So um, they were, you know, they said that this is one of the worst um, cases of a narcissist because this man evidently was all about himself. Well, yeah. since she posted this on social media, he also cut her off completely. So from his, she doesn't know where he is or anything. She knows she'll be filing for divorce, but she doesn't know where to find him anymore. He's just gone. Wow. <laughs> and I thought, you know, um, and, and the um, Dr. Love mentioned that uh, this happens with couples too, because this is when, when one person is, this way and feels like if you don't do what they say to do as wrong as it may be or as right as it may be then they feel that you can no longer exist with them and it has also led to abuse by the narcissist you know and um i thought um about all these things and how how much this particular tongue the self-absorbed tongue, even though all of the others has pierced me to the core, but this one got a little deeper. This one really got a little deeper. And I guess it's because I've, I see that behavior all the time. I'm like, Tommy, I had a boss, my very, very first boss, I told you about him, was like that. And um, I had to leave. I just could not work with that man, you know? because he made me so unhappy mm. and that's that's what they can do to you you know they can just tear you down mm -hmm. yeah you know, so and you know i was waiting for somebody to bring up you know um relationships um like for example marriage um and it can go either way too you know um a man think you know i'm i'm the man i'm the man you know what i'm saying like like you just do what I tell you to do, but women can also be, you know, um, especially if she's the breadwinner. You know what I mean? She's the breadwinner, and their husband may not make as much money. Or, you know, they're different examples. But another um, family dynamic is sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry is real, in that, um, especially if in a large family family with a lot of kids, some kids will act out and do things just to get attention, you know, because mm -hmm. they're married, you know, and um, that's self-absorbed, you know. Um, so it, it happens in, in, in uh, the family a lot as well. And, and between marriage, you know, the, the, the uh, people, people who are married as well as siblings. Another place that we can find self-absorption and, and be out of life. Yeah, we're like, you know, saying what we should do and what we should do and this is what you, you, you got to do this, you got to do that. I mean, it's kind of... Um, Not only that, a lot of churches nowadays revolve around the personality of their leader and they are much more focused on worshiping that individual than they are more than God. Mm -hmm. Right. They show up to see the, the preacher. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, and, exactly. You know, so, so, I mean, it has a lot of different questions. Um, it's interesting that that uh, you just mentioned that because I was just looking up a scripture on division because the world is so divided right now. Yeah. And in scripture, we, we, we're told that that happens and that it will continue to happen. But Romans 16, 17, and 18 says, 
I appeal to you, brothers. Uh, no, that's not. This is the one I want to read. First Corinthians 1, 10 to 13. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there is no division among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And so the reminder there for, for the body of Christ is that we don't follow the, the people that have been appointed to leave those flocks. We follow Christ. And if, if something about them is pulling us away from Christ, then maybe that's not who we should be following. You know, or if you are setting them up on a pedestal and following them, then you are negating what the Lord wants you to, wants us to do and what, what he wants us to be. So it's causing more and more division. And you know who the father of division is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he is busy, busy, busy. Yeah. 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 So self-absorption is one of Satan's favorite tools to use against us. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. You know, and put in our spirit. You know, and, yeah. Uh, we fall prey to it. I mean, we fall easily to it because it kind of feels good, you know. Yeah. The man, you know, kind of be you know, the, the person with get all the attention. Um, but after this reading. I really see the, the, the damage that it can do. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it and it, it damages the other person, but really it's, it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not good for you, for you, you know, because the uh, you put yourself high up on the on the platform, you when you fall, the fall will be great, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. nobody ain't gonna wanna get you when you fall. <laughs> break yeah. your fall either. They might put you back, put you hard now. <laughs> because they like, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. And that was the other thing that I wanted to say is um, if people are bragging about themselves, talking about themselves, people start to wait around to wait to see if you're going to mess up. So that when you do mess up, they can say, see, I got you. Look, look, mm -hmm. see there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. you've been bragging so much, it's like, okay, wow, this is, see, you ain't perfect. You, you're not all that in a bag of chips, you know? Yeah. Right. Too. But you put your target on yourself when you always speak it up, you're, you're speaking on yourself. You know? mm -hmm. Put your own target on your back. Right. You know, Larry, um, I remember, um, and Marva probably, I don't know if Marva remembers this, but one of the very first times that I visited Marva and Ron in Detroit, that was many years ago. The boys were little then. And Marva gave a little party for me because quite a few Panamanians are in Detroit. So one of my classmates came and then another Marva's classmate and her husband came. And those two people, the husband of Marva's classmate and my classmate stood in the kitchen comparing notes about what they had. It was all material things. Wow. And I was so disgusted because I'm thinking to myself, this is not about you all. This is my party. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just bragging, you know? And I'm saying, why? Why is this even necessary? Who cares? <clears throat> you know, who really cares? You know? Yeah. And, um, but... Um, I, and I find that, you know, like Marisa said about some ministers and they, you know, people should always remember, I am not going there for the, that pastor mm -hmm. because he's, he's not going to lead me to heaven. My, uh, the, the focus should be for the self-absorbed person is 
that person is so focused on themselves that they think they're God. Mm. They put yeah. themselves, they forget about God. Mm. You know? And so yeah. you know, we have to really work on that with our own selves. And this mm -hmm. is why I just love this book. <laughs> Yeah. I really want to in, introduce it to my circle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, getting so much from it. You know, it, it's yes. a lot of, a lot of uh, information there. And I've read through it multiple times, and I get something different every time I read. You know, um, this wasn't my first time reading through this book. Um, but, you know, the, I think that our discussion and the way that we approach the book has helped me get a deeper understanding of you know how I should be looking at how I use my tongue, how I use my language. Um, it, I mean, it, it can apply to so many different areas of my life. You know, um, it, it has helped me with work, helped me with Teresa, it's helped me with kids, it's helped me with you know mm -hmm. so many different on so many different areas with myself, with my ministry. My preaching life it, it's helped me in so many different ways because our words are so important. Our words are yeah. so important, and this is one of the most valuable lessons that any person can learn: how to tame your tongue. And in James, in the book of James, I think it's four, it says it's the most one of the most difficult things in the world to do. Um, talked about a ship having a rudder, and how a big old ship is controlled by this little rudder. It's the same thing with the tongue. You know, they say our tongue is uh, it starts it's, a wildfire, and it can, uh -huh. you know, it, it can do a lot of damage. Even though it's a small uh, physical piece, it, does, it, it can do a lot of damage. It really can. Yeah. <laughs> so true. And I think oh. I, somebody else mentioned this earlier about. Um, being sicky, and they might not even really be sick, but they'll play sick hmm. to get some attention. Uh -huh. And the uh, hypochondriac, I think that's what it's called, being a hypochondriac. <laughs> and that's, I mean, I, that's one of my peeves, like, because if you're pretending like you're sick, then that's bad juju. You're going to end up getting, you're going to end up getting sick. You're speaking it upon yourself, or you're bringing it upon yourself. And, um, yeah, that's that's not good. Being a hypochondriac, and that, it, it reminds me of um, being a hypochondriac. It's almost like uh, that story we heard as kids: the boy who cried wolf. Uh -huh. Eventually, nobody ain't gonna pay attention to you. You be crying wolf all the all the way along, and then once when it's really actually a wolf about to get you, nobody believes you because you don't. Where? Where, where are you welcome? Yeah. Yeah, so true. But one thing I started doing when people start bragging about all they have and you know the car, the house, and all that stuff, I say, man, I'm I'm praying for you because you got a lot of bills, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then they start to study. <laughs> and it changed the whole conversation when they start talking about <laughs> man. Yep. Shut that down. Yeah, shut it down real quick. <laughs> uh, but that's that's one of the things that um, Elton just did when they talked. That's one of the things that they suggested. Change the subject. Yeah. Talk about something different. Mm -hmm. Keep them off guard. And if they really bad, they'll try to come back in. But <laughs> one of the things you change the subject. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's hard when it's a family member that's around you all the time. Mm -hmm. So you have to pretty much you're being the opposite of a uh, self-observed person because they are taking all the attention and you're not saying anything. Right. Right. Yep, that's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Is it? Anybody else have any? Larry, time? very great lesson. Yeah, this was good. Mm -hmm. good it, it took a lot of self uh, examination to get through this. A lot of self examination. Yeah. Well, this is kind of unrelated, but last week I didn't realize that it was not on the birthday. And who? I told you. Oh. Oh. Well, it says Veronica. But, uh, and I didn't know until just maybe two days ago, and I looked, and it was like, you know, you have, you know, to the uh, real, get the real and have like two or three days ago. So I told you happy birthday. Then it was, what day was it? Yes, thank you. Huh? What day was it? The 26th. 26th. Yeah, that was less than about a week ago. So, was it last Tuesday? Yes. Yes. Wow. Oh, I wish you could say happy birthday to you. Thank can you. We, Thank can, we, can we maybe uh, do a, a related birthday, happy birthday for us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Sing happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's give her a good tradition. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It should be cumpleaños. Good cumpleaños. What did Larissa say? I said what? about my Tia Toti, because I have two Tias on the phone, but my Tia Toti, one of the things that I have always appreciated and loved most about her, and I know that a lot of my cousins agree, because we, we talked about you, is that I, is, my Toti always made us, had a way of making us feel so special when we were kids. And she always talked to us in such a loving and sweet way, and always, you just, you just always felt like the center of the universe when you were around Aunt Toasty. And I think that's just a great example of the opposite of what we're talking about today is because, like, when I was a kid and we would go to Panama, I always, well, Uncle Martin and Aunt Toasty always showed us a great time. But Aunt Toasty just, there was something about her personality, and there is something about her personality and <laughs> the way that she loves on people that really makes you feel like, you're special and that you're and that you're special for her. And so that's uh, something I thought of when we were singing her happy birthday. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. <laughs> and you are special to me. Uh, <laughs> I, won't, I won't tell them that I'm your favorite. <laughs> 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 so, Jeff, why are you not even bringing it up last week? Because mm -hmm. you were on last week. Yeah. You just say one word. That's a demonstration of humility right there. Uh -huh. Because you could have uh -huh. been like, hey, y'all, it's my birthday, you know, and <laughs> let it be known. <laughs> demonstrated the exact opposite of what we were, we were having a discussion about. Uh -huh. That's a good example there. Yeah, well, thank you, God. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. in, in this, um, in this class today, in this time, it brings me, it reminds me of my mom and my aunt. There were only, there were two girls and four boys in the middle. My mom was the first girl. My aunt was the baby. But my auntie was exactly this tongue. Mm -hmm. And you, and Mark is here to confirm it. It's true. My mom. My mom was the opposite. She was. In everything, my mom was the opposite. My auntie wanted to be the last word, the best thing. My opinion is the best opinion, is what I says. And my mom, my mom would just listen and let her, you know. But when I was younger, it, it, I never pay attention to it. But when I was like in my 20s that I had my kids, that's when I start seeing all these things on my on my auntie and believe you me, I start getting like a, 
resentment to her, but mm -hmm. I never told her and I never did nothing to show her resentment. But I knew that I was not feeling for her what I used to, because mm -hmm. when I when she do things and I see how my mom act and I will say, but why she's like that, you know? Why she can't? And it was the opposite, the two are My aunt is, is this tongue right here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Was, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And they won't, they won't say anything because they don't want it to be about them, but they had the same thing with their mom and their aunt, the same identical thing. <laughs> God, yes, and totally yeah. the same. And I, I feel like you. I felt so bad because I started to re resent my aunt. Yes, I, I was feeling bad that I felt like that because my mom have two, three sisters, and all three of them are in September. So we was like, Grandma, we know what you was doing three times. <laughs> and, and my mom's birthday is the twenty first. And my aunt, Elta could testify, my aunt is to 24. So whenever we would say happy birthday, mine's next, mine's next, <laughs> 24, mine's next. And, and, yes. and my mom wouldn't say one word, not yes. one word. And then wow. we, when we would buy, buy my mom something or take pictures and give her pictures, where's mine? Where's yes. <laughs> yes, and, yes, and yes. Cody the same and I was feeling so and I was too when I was like 20 something I was feeling like you you know because I could really start seeing it and I stopped yes. feeling so bad mm -hmm. I'm like yeah. she's too old for this <laughs> <laughs> now, Tina, what was the um what was the uh age difference who was the oh uh, with mm -hmm. with my mom and her sisters of so three years difference okay so who was your was your mom older than my no. mom was the youngest but oh. we, and and the thing is in our family we automatic automatic we never argue with nobody older than us because your elders you got their respect because yeah. you, oh, you yeah. got all the attention because mm -hmm. of your age so you never she never never had to do that but she always did. <laughs> she was she was putting herself out there when she had it automatically. You know, mm -hmm. when her, her cousin or somebody walk in the room, we say hi. But when she walked in, we like hi, Auntie. She was the oldest. What? Nobody gonna say nothing to me first. I'm the oldest. You know. <laughs> Oh, I feel you. We here. We are here. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't want to say that because I didn't want to make it personal, but oh, we here. We are here. <laughs> it, 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 it's, this was stated that uh, that can happen in families where you could be the, the oldest child or the youngest. Mm -hmm. and and it maybe started out as little kids that they wanted that that attention that they felt they were not getting mm -hmm. and then they grow into this person that mm. they become you know yeah i was gonna say that um the way you guys talked about auntie um that there we can learn from two learn two different kind of ways mm -hmm. we can learn by example, like we want to do exactly like that person does because they're doing the right thing. But then you can learn <laughs> what not to do as well. Exactly. I remember I had a supervisor that was an excellent supervisor. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to kind of create my supervisory style to be something similar to that. But this dude over here, he teaches me what not to do. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you can learn what to do and what not to do for people too. <laughs> I liked I liked how the uh, Reginald was it Sharp that said yes it was Sharp he talked about his uh, little goddaughter yeah. and how her parents had begun to train her mm -hmm. to be a better listener to others and I thought that was so so important yes mm -hmm. uh, he would say they would be talking on the phone and and he could hear her saying in the background well have you said have you asked Uncle so and so Uncle Reginald how his day has gone. Oh, 
Aww. you know, she didn't want the daughter, to, the little girl to grow up with it being all about her. Right. So she would prompt her from the back when she was talking to her godfather, who is Reginald Sharp and, and, and his wife. And she would remind her to ask them how their day was or to ask them, you know, things about themselves. Mm -hmm. the conversation, she would not develop a habit of mm -hmm. making the conversation be about her. And I thought that's a good strategy for, for you know, bringing kids up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like conversation wrapping up um, next uh, I'm not, I don't have my um, workbook with me today um, but who's up next week is it Mr. Drew Mama George next week uh, I um I think it's Mama Jordan next week. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Okay. 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 Step away, but um, so we're gonna give her the uh, floor next week, and uh, I think to say about um, everybody who's been leading. I've learned a little something from everybody about how mm -hmm. to to teach. You know. Um, you guys are some amazing teachers. And one of the things that I learned about um, being a good leader is you have to learn how to follow. And um, it's hard to follow somebody who you don't respect or somebody who you don't have a buy-in with. But I'm, I'm, I'm all in, hook, line, and sinker because I learn so much every single week, no matter who teaches, no matter who leads. I get something from it besides just, you know, the, the material, but um, the style of what you do, you know, and how you guys present it. Um, I just want to share that with you guys, that you guys are also teaching me how to uh, become a better leader. Uh, yeah. Become a, and become a better teacher. I am a better teacher um, since, this, you know, we've been having this Bible study. Uh, I've been getting... Uh, so nuggets for everybody the whole time. I might not always point it out, but I am paying very close attention and I appreciate um, what you guys yeah. do. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it. And um, it was a wonderful thing, especially with Uncle Gordon told me, he said, you know what, I've never done anything like this. He hadn't done it before because he did so well. I was like, what? This is your first time? I mean, you really couldn't tell. Um, so, so it's just, it's, uh, it makes the, the, the experience that much more rich for me. So I want to tell you guys, thank you again while I have the opportunity and I have everybody on the line. Okay. Amen. So with that being said, maybe we can uh, go ahead and conclude the tonight's uh, study unless there's anything that someone would like to add before we do. Well, if there's nothing else, I'm going to ask for our Brother Elkin to take it down in prayer, if you will, please. All right. Father God, we, we just thank you, Lord, just for just for your presence, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you, Lord, for the word that was spoken. The thank you for the leadership, dear Lord. Just thank you, Lord, just for for your presence, dear Heavenly Father. Just continue to lead us and guide us. The Lord and to continue to shine light on the blind spots, the Lord and Lord protect us as we leave, but never from from this place, but never from Your presence, dear Heavenly Father. We just thank You for this lesson, dear, dear Heavenly Father. That's to be great listeners, but at the same time, be cautious of what we say, dear Heavenly Father. Just continue to, to seek Your Your guidance. You know our plans that You have for us, dear Heavenly Father. That we'll be obedient to that. And Lord, just continue to Watch over those that was here, that watch over those that was was wanted to come but wasn't able. And we just pray for the prayer of those that was less as, as fortunate and those that are going through some things that may not be said, but you know what they are, dear Lord. You're a comforter, you're a healer, you're a provider. Heavenly Father, we just say thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. I had to step away to feed my grandson. That's so right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Room service. <laughs> I'm, I made the best soup last night. Oh, oh yeah. Wow, that's kind of self absorbing, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, but, but I have ask, ask Larry. Ask Larry. <laughs> I want some of that soup. That's all right. <laughs> I'm gonna get no soup. <laughs> I made him so I made them um smoked turkey with ooh, black eyed peas and greens. Mm. Wow. Wow. Okay. The, the address is what? <laughs> we know where you live. <laughs> I think, I think wow. this, this was a good one. Wow. You gotta hit the bottom of your stomach and just press the button right Wow. I love soup. Yes. This is, the time, this is the time of year when soup is just the greatest. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Wow. Soup and a good stew is stew, though. Know? Yes. Ice uh -huh. yes. 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 Our stew, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ice cream. And this soup with a fork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Hell yeah. What? Very hard. Wow. Wow. She with a fork. Mm -hmm. It had a lot of food in it, lots of vegetables and stuff. Oh, okay. That's what I mean. Yes. Oh, yes. So, Tommy, I'll save my self absorbed recipe for next week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 I didn't want to change the subject. I made soup two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, and I finished, a bowl, I finished a bowl of my soup. Tonight, from what I had made two days ago, too. <laughs> yeah. I got some leftover. I got some uh, leftover gumbo in the freezer. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> And I and I made some of Mama's uh, yellow split pea soup, and I finally figured out how to make the the, the base like she makes it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow, wow, Larry, this out of 30 days, <laughs> day 21, <laughs> um, and nobody, nobody paid attention to your lesson. I feel so sorry for you, Larry. <laughs> oh, Lord. He had not one, but three examples. Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> 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 You're a prophet everywhere but at home, Larry. <laughs> That's a good one, Tommy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we'll see you guys later. Okay, right. good night. Bye. Bye. All right. All right. All right. Rest well. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Love Bye. you all. Love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh oh, did it come off now? Turn it on again. Let's see. Do it to read them. My phone, that's what my music plan. That's what I think it's mine. Hold on, I'm hanging up, so. 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 I'm hanging